handoff goes to Tobes, big hole! Quarterback sack back at the fours. I can't win. Oh boy, what a hit. Boy, I tell you what, you won't see a better run than we just saw by Dante Hall. He's going to return it for a touchdown from the 45-yard line. He owes 55 yards. Now they snap it. Going to throw here to Parker at the 20, at the 15, at the 10, at the 5. He is almost... He got a touchdown! He got a touchdown! He got a touchdown! He got a touchdown! He got it in! He got it in! He got it in! Oh, doctor! Texas A&M started two-a-day workouts under the hot August sun with optimism at the challenge that lay ahead. For head coach R.C. Slocum and his team, the season would be one of the most memorable in the storied history of Texas Aggie football. Overcoming adversity and playing with the hearts the size of the state they proudly represent, the Aggies' never-give-up attitude made the 1998 season truly special. It all began with a trip to the Big Apple. Hey, uh, I'm Chris Valletta, and uh, we are in uh, on the New York City Harbor Cruise. We are just touring around, getting ready to play Florida State. Statue of Liberty over our shoulder, everybody uh, just hanging out, having a good time. <laughs> New York City provided the backdrop, and a date with Florida State gave the team the first of many challenges they would face. The kickoff classic at Giant Stadium in New Jersey pitted the 14th-ranked Aggies against the second-ranked Seminoles. Florida State jumped out to a quick 10-0 lead in the first quarter. But the Aggies came back on the second quarter, scoring on a one-yard run by DeAndre Hardeman and a 22-yard fumble recovery by Jay Brooks. Pressure from the backside, he's fumbled the ball. It's been picked up by the Aggies. And Bill Reeves returned for a touchdown. They took a 14-10 lead at halftime. However, FSU controlled the rest of the game and went on to win 23-14. Senior linebacker Dad Wynn had 13 tackles with one tackle for loss and was named the defensive player of the game. The 18th ranked Aggies faced Louisiana Tech at Kyle Field in the rain. Louisiana Tech came into the game as the nation's number two passing offense. With offensive weapons Tim Rattay and Troy Edwards. However, the AM wrecking crew held the Bulldogs to just 239 yards passing and held Edwards to just 67 yards receiving well below his 238-yard average. Offensively, the Aggies got three touchdowns from Hardeman and two field goals from Russell Bynum to roll to a 28-7 victory. The Aggies moved up to 17th in the polls and traveled to Hattiesburg, Mississippi to take on Southern Miss. The Aggies encountered some adversity when an administrative error caused senior fullback Tiki Hardeman to be declared ineligible for the season. The suspension coupled with injuries to AM's first and second string running backs resulted in a starting backfield of Burnest Rhodes and true freshman Jamar the Big Rumble Tombs. Again, the AM defense was dominant. The Aggies held the Eagles to 176 yards in total offense, allowed only six points recovered two fumbles and had three interceptions. The Aggies sent in a whole bunch of people and they just had the ball deflected into the hands of Webster. Here's a return from the 45. He's intercepted the ball down to the 30. Out of bounds he goes at about the 25 yard line. Russell Bynum and Dante Hall provided the offense for the Aggies. As Bynum was three for three for field goals including a 41 yarder and Hall hampered by a hamstring injury had touchdown runs of 44 and 16 yards. Looking for the left side, breaks a tackle at the 40, breaks a tackle at 35, at the 30, at the 20, looking to beat a man at the 10, at the 5, he will score a touchdown. 24-6 over USM. and m returned to Kyle Field to face North Texas and wasted no time in putting points on the board. On the first play of their first possession, Brandon Stewart hit Chris Cole for a 60-yard touchdown, and the Aggies never looked back. The Aggie offense went stagnant midway through the first half, and Randy McCowan replaced Stewart at QB. McCowan completed 11 of 13 passes for 167 yards to ignite the Aggie offense. Cole hooked up with McCowan for two more touchdown catches of 35 and 52 yards and finished the game with six receptions for 174 yards. How about 
Oh! Sir Parker added a three-yard touchdown late in the fourth quarter, and the Aggies won it 28 to nine. Later in the second quarter. A&M opened Big 12 conference play in Lawrence, Kansas against the upset-minded Kansas Jayhawks. On the first play of the game, KU quarterback Zach Wegner's pass was intercepted by Dat Wynn and returned to the Kansas 11-yard line. Dante Hall scored on an eight-yard run to take a quick 7-0 lead. Hall would score two more touchdowns on the day and rush for 177 yards. Despite the quick start, the Aggies found themselves trailing KU 21-17 with 8.54 remaining in the game. From there, A&M marched 75 yards in 11 plays to win the game 24-21. That one drive that we had, where well, we took it down, we were behind and we had to go down and score. That that did wonders for this team, for this offense. Teams lose games like this. They come on the road and get in one of these things and they have a few bad things happen to them and they end up losing games like that. And I think it's a real, real credit to our team that when it came time to do what they had to do, they found a way to, to go win the ball game. October 10th, 1998 is a date the Aggie faithful will remember for many years to come. What would be the biggest game ever at Kyle Field, the number two Nebraska Cornhuskers came to town to face the number 18 Aggies and a very loud 12th man clad in maroon. Midway through the first quarter, the Aggies struck first with an 81-yard Randy McCowan to Chris Taylor touchdown pass. Caught at midfield at the 50. That will be Taylor at the 30. Has a man to beat. Can he get it into the end zone? He will score! Wow! about a third down and 25. That's a big time third down conversion. That goes 81 yards. Wow. I, wow. Randy McCown with a lot of time to throw. The, the, the vaunted Nebraska rush, the four-man rush, did not get to Randy McCown. He stepped up. He found Chris Taylor on a crossing route. It was a perfect throw. The Nebraska secondary going for the knockdown or the interception. He had one man to beat. He outran the secondary, and it's an 81-yard touchdown for Chris Taylor. A&M strikes first in this ballgame at 7.05 of the first quarter. Nebraska tied it at 7-all in the second. Then the big rumble. Jamar Toombs broke the Cornhuskers' backs with a punishing 71-yard run to the Nebraska one. Side 20 at the 10. High steps down to the one-yard line. A man drags him down at the one. Tackle made by Mike Brown. Everything apparently in order behind the play. Jamar Toombs just went 71 yards. From there, Dante Hall scored and put the Aggies ahead 14-7 at the half. In the third quarter, the wrecking crew came through with a huge defensive series in which Nebraska quarterback Bobby Newcomb was sacked on three consecutive plays. Newcomb drops back, looking to throw, steps up, now he is sacked! Back inside the 15 at the 11. On the third play, Ron Edwards fought off his block to sack Newcomb and force a fumble. Warwick Holman recovered in the end zone for a touchdown. The fans are loving it. The coaches are loving it. The whole stadium is shaking. Later in the third, the Aggies drive appeared to stall until McCowan tucks the ball and takes off for a big 33-yard gain. That sets up Jamar Toombs' first career touchdown on the first play of the fourth quarter, and the Aggies lead 28 to seven. Over the goal line, and look at this offense come off the field. They're excited. I guess so. And Toombs is on his knees right on top of the X in Texas. Nebraska scored two quick TDs in the fourth to cut the margin to 28 to 21, and appears to be driving until Cedric Curry intercepts a new pass at midfield to seal the Aggie win. With the victory, the Aggies end Nebraska's 19-game and 40-game regular season conference winning streaks. Both Dante Hall and Jamar Toombs rushed for over 100 yards, and the wrecking crew 
held the Nebraska rushing offense to 141 yards and stops the Huskers on three fourth down tries. Despite breaking his thumb in the first quarter, Dad Wynn had nine tackles to lead the Aggie defense. Senior linebacker Warwick Holman had eight tackles, including one sack and a fumble recovery for a touchdown, and was named the National Defensive Player of the Week. Wow, this, this one is huge for us. Um, it's from everybody who stepped on that field, for everyone who's ever practiced, um, everyone who's ever worn an AM jersey, man. This, this is unbelievable. Um, you know, this team's worked so hard together. It's just, I'm glad to see that it paid off and that we got this win. The biggest win I think I've ever been associated with. Um, everybody talked uh, all week about how we can't win the big games and uh, we're choking the big games. And I think this really set the step stone for us. Our team knowing that we can win the big game and um, hopefully it'll bring us over, take us over the hump. I told the team it's between your ears and in your heart. That's, where, that's what's going to make the difference. And we went kind of by position by position and talked about uh, just believing that you could get it done and going out and being willing to hang in there and work to get it done. With the win over Nebraska, the Aggies moved to number 10 in the polls and headed up Highway 6 to Waco to face the Baylor Bears. There were many who were worried the Aggies would suffer an emotional letdown following the Nebraska victory. Those concerns were quickly put to rest. Aggies scored on drives of 64, 84, 79, 80 and 70 yards, racked up 241 passing, 294 rushing, 35 points and pulled off a few trick plays in the process. Chris Taylor scored on a 61 yard reverse. And he's at the 50, at the 40, he's at the 30. He got by that man, he's gonna score as he high steps out of a tackle at the 15. Sir Parker threw a touchdown pass to Derek Spiller. Parker throwing end zone, he has Spiller. Touchdown! And punter Shane Leckler connected with safety Rich Cody off a fake punt for 29 yards and a first down late in the fourth quarter. Jamar Toombs did all the work from there, hitting pay dirt on a three-yard fullback drive. Dad Wynn continued to make his case for All-American with 13 tackles, including two for loss. Warwick Holman was a disruptive force in the Baylor backfield with 11 tackles, two sacks, and three passes broken up. Dante Hall ran for 137 yards on only 17 carries. All in all, it was a dominating performance on both sides of the ball. 25th ranked Texas Tech was up next for the now 8th ranked Aggies. A&M was determined to end three years of frustration against the Red Raiders. It got off to a slow start. On the first play of the game, Randy McCowan fumbled and Tech recovered on the A&M 25-yard line. Tough defense held Tech to a field goal. Late in the first quarter, the Aggies drove the ball to the Tech 8-yard line before the drive stalled. A&M lined up for the tying field goal, but instead ran the fake. Shane Leckler hit Dan Campbell in the end zone, and the Aggies took a 7-3 lead. <laughs> Tech would score its lone touchdown off another McCowan fumble. But the Aggies would answer with a four-play, 61-yard drive that included a 55-yard pass play to Dante Hall. A few plays later, Hall scored from a yard out to take a 14-10 lead at halftime. The only points of the second half came off a 24-yard field goal by Bynum in the fourth to give the Aggies a 17-10 lead. The defense would be called on to finish the game, and they needed two big plays from the secondary to do so. Facing a third down from the A&M 25, Texas Tech quarterback Rob Peters lofted a pass to Donnie Hart in the zone. Hart made the catch, but not before stepping out of bounds. On fourth down, Tech tried the same play to the other side of the end zone, but the pass fell incomplete, sealing A&M's seventh straight win. The wrecking crew held Tech running back Ricky Williams to a season-low 94 yards rushing. The victory over Tech was R.C. Slocum's 90th for his career. Aggies next face the orange and black of Oklahoma State on Halloween night in Stillwater. OSU put a scare into the Aggies as they jumped out to a 6-0 lead in the second quarter. Chris Taylor's 84-yard kickoff return after OSU's second field goal put a spark in the Aggie offense. 15, a little bit of a seam at the 20, 25, 30, 45, 50, 
He has a man to beat at the 30, down to the 20, caught from the backside, and they go out of bounds at the 12-yard line. He returned that from the three. Matt Bumgardner caught a seven-yard touchdown pass from McCowan to take a 7-6 to six lead. About a yard deep in the zone. Two-step drop, Randy McCowan catches the slant, throws it perfectly to Baumgartner on the quick slant. In the end zone, touchdown A&M. Later in the second, Russell Bynum added a 37-yard field goal for a 10-6 lead at the half. Randy McCowan had to leave the game in the second half with a sprained shoulder. Brandon Stewart came in and promptly hit Taylor for a 34-yard touchdown. Caught, 15, 10, 5, touchdown, it's Taylor again. How about Stewart? He comes in cold, <laughs> no chance to warm up. He hits a slant pattern, good for 34 yards. <laughs> Unbelievable. Untouched touched into the end zone. Oh, that's Stewart. <laughs> that's incredible. You know, it seems it's North Texas, and he hits a 34-yard touchdown pass on his first play out of shotgun on a third down and 17. And the Aggies suddenly lead it 16 to 6. From there, the defense took over. The wrecking crew held OSU to only 172 yards total offense, allowing only 54 yards in the second half. Jamar Toombs finished the game with a career-high 111 yards. That win became the all-time leading tackler in school history by posting 12 tackles for the game, 460 for his career. The Aggies moved up one spot to number seven in the polls and faced the Sooners of Oklahoma. A&M dominated the Sooners on both sides of the ball for the entire game. Jason Webster got the Aggies on the board with a 55-yard punt return. It was Webster's first punt return of his collegiate career. 20 now, beats a man at the 10. He's going to return it for a touchdown. From the 45-yard line, he owes 55 yards. <laughs> Chris Cole had touchdown catches of 24 and 47 yards. Brandon Stewart, starting for the injured Randy McCowan, had the two touchdown passes to Cole and added a six-yard touchdown run, and Russell Bynum kicked a 43-yard field goal. A&M cruised to a 29-0 victory, amassing 355 yards of total O and holding Oklahoma to 124 yards of total offense. Dad Wynn paced the wrecking crew with 10 tackles. A&M continued to move up in the polls, landing at number six and ready to face Missouri in the final home game of the year. This game marked the last time 18 seniors would play at Kyle Field. Call it while it's in the air, okay? okay. Call it. Tails. He called tails. It is tails. We want to defer short. Okay, hold on just a moment, please. Both teams were scoreless through the first quarter, and in the second, the Aggies could only manage two Bynum field goals. Missouri went into the half leading 7-6 on a Corby Jones 10-yard run. The third quarter was scoreless, and the Aggies finally took the lead in the fourth. A&M drove the ball down to the Tiger 1, where Randy McCowan scored on the keeper. On the two-point conversion, McCowan hit Leroy Hodge in a crossing pattern to take a 14-7 lead. But Missouri would fight back. The Tigers drove to the A&M nine-yard line where the drive appeared to stall. Facing fourth and four, Missouri went for it all and got the touchdown on a Jones to Dwayne Blakely pass, tying the game at 14. Aggies got the ball back, unable to move and were forced to punt. On the punt. Missouri return man Randy Potter never really got the handle on the ball and Toya Jones was there to recover the fumble and give the Aggies a second chance. A&M moved the ball in short burst, but ate up the clock as well and finally had to settle for a 39-yard Russell Bynum field goal. Missouri would get one last shot, but the defense held, forcing Missouri to attempt a 56-yard field goal that fell well short. The win was A&M's 10th straight of the season, the 13th straight home victory, and the third victory this year over a ranked team. It marked the fourth time in the 90s that A&M has won at least 10 games in a season. I was just happy for the seniors, you know. That's the best, man, them guys, they're probably the best group of 
guys I've been around, you know what I'm saying, as far as football and friends and all that, the whole go around. They're just a good group, and I was just happy to see them, you know, get a victory. Going into the Texas game, the Aggies had already claimed the Big 12 South Conference Championship and were looking for their 11th straight win. It was a record-setting day in Austin, a record crowd of over 83,000 on hand, the largest ever to witness a football game in the state. Texas running back Ricky Williams became the NCAA's all-time leading rusher, and A&M's Dat win recorded his 500th career tackle. The only A&M highlight of the first half was a McCowan to Derek Spiller 20-yard touchdown pass in the second quarter. The Aggies spotted Texas with a 23-7 lead with 9.46 left in the fourth quarter and then mounted a comeback. Randy McCowan connected with Chris Cole for 55 yards and set up a Russell Bynum 30-yard field goal to cut the lead to 23-10. On Texas' next drive, Williams fumbled the ball and the Aggies recovered on the Texas 17. Two plays later, McCowan and Spiller connect again for a 17-yard touchdown and cut the Texas lead to 23-17. The wrecking crew held the Longhorns and forced a punt that Jason Webster returned 35 yards to the Texas 24. 35, 30, caught from the backside down at about the 24-yard line. Boy, is this game turned around in a matter of minutes. The Aggies drive to the Texas one and face a fourth and goal. Run the option. Here's McCowan cutting it back inside. He got in a touchdown. touchdown! 2.20 to go in the game. And Texas A&M is leading in this one. Texas got the ball with 2.20 left and was able to drive downfield for a game-winning field goal and stop the Aggie 10-game winning streak. What about uh, next week? How do you bounce back from this one? Yeah, you let, you let this be your fuel is what you do. A game like this, you lose. And uh, you get mad about it, and you come back, you work harder next week. And I tell you, I'm ready to go to work. I, you know, it hurts your pride to take a loss like that because we, I mean, we're not used to losing. Last time we lost was Florida State, and uh, we're going to bounce back. We'll be ready for K State. Uh, this team, I think, throughout the year has demonstrated a tremendous amount of character and heart. I thought they they did that in the game today. They never quit in the ball game. They hung in there, and it, if. Uh, it remains to be seen, but I, I would bet that they'd come back and show, show the same character and get ready to go play next week. Just as the October game with Nebraska will live in the memories of Aggies forever, so will the December 5th game, the Big 12 championship game against the number one Kansas State Wildcats. The Aggies fell to 10th in the polls following the loss to Texas and once again spotted their opponent with a 15-point lead. KSU led 10-0 after the first. 17 to 6 at the half and 27 to 12 going into the fourth quarter but just like the game against texas the aggies never gave up senior quarterback brandon stewart who got the start due to an injury to randy mccowan himself went down in the first quarter with a twisted knee he came back not missing a series and kept the aggies within reach through three quarters the aggie wrecking crew played tough royal and bradley career best day 13 tackles Bradley back at the 34-yard line. He spun, come out of the pocket, and Roiland put him down like a rag doll. That win, third quarter, intercepts a KSU Bishop pass that led to a Jamar Toombs touchdown. Went at the 34, here comes the return, cutting it back at the 40, coming to the sideline, and they will go down at the 43. Bishop intercepted. That win, and that will be his sixth career interception. Three tight ends and two fullbacks. Here's the snap. The handoff will go to Jamar Toombs. That is a touchdown for Toombs. His third of the season. Aggies have just made it a 17 to 12 ball game. Rich Cody, senior safety, big tackle on third down, forced a grammatica field goal. 20 to 12. KSU. Rich Cody, what a play! He wow. took down Goolsby and he took down Hickson, the blocker and the ball carrier. The fourth quarter and another KSU score left a 15-point deficit as the never-say-die Aggies began the comeback in a game for the ages. Under 12 minutes left in the game, Brandon Stewart and the offense went to work. 
Starting at their own 22, AM mounted a 10-play drive that included big plays to Chris Taylor and Derek Spiller and ended with a 13-yard touchdown pass from Stewart to Leroy Hodge. Enzo throwing short, and it is caught for a touchdown. That's Hodge in the end zone. Threw it a little bit high, and Hodge leaped up, brought it down. Well, they went with three wide receivers, so they got a mismatch. They got to Hodge on Cooper. An outstanding job of locating the open man by Brandon Stewart and then delivering a fine pass in the end zone. Hodge comes up with a catch just outside of Cooper's coverage, and it's a touchdown for the Aggies. With 9.20 to go, and that drive started all the way back at the 22-yard line. That was a very impressive drive against the number two defense in the country. KSU was forced to punt on their next possession. A&M got the ball back. Wideouts on the right. Throw the ball over the middle. That's Spiller again. Wide open at the 40, 30, 35, 20. Inside the 20, down to about the 17-yard line. Driving again, but failed to convert a critical fourth down. And Kansas State has the ball with 3.26 remaining. Third and six. Kansas State quarterback Michael Bishop trying to run out the clock, hit by Warwick Holman. Fumble recovered by Cornelius Anthony. And he's got the first down. Fumbled it! I think they got it back again. And oh, the Aggies have it. At the 35-yard line, Bishop has fumbled. And it's a ms ball at the 35. A penalty backs the Aggies up to the 50. Then Stewart connected with Matt Bumgarner for a spectacular 36-yard reception. Yeah, that's Bumgarner. Reaches out, brought it in at the 14-yard line. Oh, Bum man. just caught it at the 14. First down, Texas A&M. 2.15 remaining in the ballgame. That was good for 36 yards. Coverage that time by Dyshot Carter. It's an absolutely perfect throw by Brandon Stewart and an incredible catch laying out by Baumgartner. Three plays later, Stewart hits Sir Parker for a nine-yard touchdown to pull the Aggies within two. Block. Throw it, Parker into the end zone. Touchdown! That's the matchup that they want. They run Sir Parker out to the weak side of the unbalanced line. They get him lined up against the safety, Cooper, who's had a great day-to-day -day tackling, but is not a great cover guy like their cornerback. Sir Parker runs the in route, a perfect pass once again from Stewart, and he'll take it in for the touchdown. The Aggies going for two. Again, it's Stewart and Parker connecting. Slot to the right. Got a light eye. Put a man in motion, Parker's coming back to the right side. Take the snap, drop back, loft one. Parker, it's good! Parker in the zone, tied the ball game. All right, here's what they did. They put a slot to the right side and they sent Sir Parker in motion that way. They ran in routes by their two slot guys to knock off the defenders and Parker is wide open in the end zone. It's a two point conversion and our game is tied at 27. There's a minute and five seconds left in this ball game. The Wildcats made one last ditch effort to score in regulation. Came up short when senior safety Toya Jones tackled Darnell McDonald at the three yard line. The game went into overtime with a score knotted at 27. A&M got the ball first and Stewart hit Spiller for 18 yards and a first and goal from the KSU 7. Dante Hall rushed three times for six yards and the Aggies then called on Russell Bynum to hit an 18 yard field goal and held the lead 30 to 27. Kansas State's turn. They drove to the A&M 4 where Gramatica kicked a 22 yard field goal to tie the game again at 30. Second overtime. KSU again has to settle for a Gramatica field goal. Spotted down, it's on its way, and he kicked this one. A&M's ball on the KSU 25. Two plays and a penalty back up the Aggies to the KSU 32. They face third and 17. Shea Holder is exposed here on this right side, but a man in motion. Now they snap it. Going to throw here to Parker at the 20, at the 15, at the 10, at the 5. He is almost. He got a touchdown! He got a touchdown! He got a touchdown! He got a touchdown! He got it in! He got it in! He got it in! Oh, Doctor! Oh, my goodness! They are bombing him! It is bedlam here! Sir Parker took it's the 32 yard pass. The Aggies have won the Big 12 championship in overtime against JN.
A&M pulls off the biggest upset of the year and wins its first Big 12 championship. Brandon Stewart finished the game 15 of 31 for 324 yards and three touchdowns. Dante Hall added 113 yards rushing, and Chris Taylor and Derek Spiller had over 90 yards receiving. Sir Parker had 30 yards rushing, 49 receiving, two touchdowns, and a two-point conversion. The Aggie offense racked up 452 total yards against KSU's second-ranked defense. On defense, the Aggies had plenty of heroes, including Dat Wynn with 17 tackles and an interception. Brandon Jennings, 15 tackles. And Roy Lynn Bradley with 13 tackles and two sacks. With the win, the Aggies would face the number three Ohio State Buckeyes in the Nokia Sugar Bowl on New Year's night in New Orleans. Hey, we talked a week ago. We talked about learning from every little experience you have. Really disappointed last week. We said that's the way life works sometimes. But if you keep your head up and just look to the next day and keep fighting and playing the next play, good things can happen. I've never seen a better example of a bunch of guys believing in each other and hanging in there, fighting and fighting and fighting and playing the next play. That, that's the finest example I've ever seen as a coach. I don't think I've seen a team under, overcome more adversity and great congratulations to you. You'll be a great representative for us in the Bowl Championship. Yeah! Yeah! just proves if you hang in there and hang in there and you got a, a group of guys that are unselfish like we do, you can get things done. That's what happened today. Uh, it gets no better than this, man. I've been trying to win a game for my team since I was in Little League and finally got the opportunity to my senior year. <laughs> well, this pretty much describes the whole team. Um, what's this team's made of? Um, what's it all about? A lot of character, a lot of heart. Um, it might be the, be the special, most special team I've been, I've been on since I've been here. And um, we never gave up. The team was greeted on their return to College Station at midnight by hundreds of screaming fans welcoming home the newly crowned champions. The break before the bowl game gave the players, fans, and media time to reflect upon the season. Dad Wynn became the first A&M player to win the Lombardi Award, honoring the top interior lineman in the nation. Former Dallas Cowboy quarterback Roger Staubach made the announcement. Giga Baggies. <laughs> Wynn was also named the recipient of the Chuck Benarik Award, honoring the top defensive player in the nation. The Aggies' visit to New Orleans provided an atmosphere of fun and excitement. They even had the chance to provide some entertainment themselves. The team also took time to visit some children who were having to spend the holidays in the hospital. The game against Ohio State in the 1999 Nokia Sugar Bowl saw the Aggies get on the board first. Dante Hall took the ball and danced his way into the zone for the early lead. Ohio State's big first quarter proved to be more than A&M could overcome on this night. The final half was marked by some big plays that kept the game close until the end. Seniors leaving their mark, showing that never give up attitude that became the trademark of this Aggie squad. Jamar Toome showed a bright future as he rushed for 62 yards on 10 carries against the third ranked defense in the nation. Although the Aggies lost this game, their 11 3 record and Big 12 championship made it 
undeniably one of the most exciting football seasons in school history. We saw the exit of a group of seniors that have left a legacy of team play that sets the bar for future Aggie squads to match.